for the last four years, we've been traveling around, mainly around the state of Tennessee, in our RV as weekend warriors. Uh, we've done about 28 trips and 10,000 miles. I'm exploring the cost of doing that. And is it worth it? Is it worth the cost of traveling in an RV? So last week I made a video about the actual cost of RV travel versus traditional travel. So like flying and renting cars and staying in hotels. And if you've not seen that video, go back and watch it because it's kind of a pre precursor to this one. Based on my math, it is more expensive to RV travel than it is to travel traditionally. We could car travel and stay in hotels cheaper than we would traveling with our RV. So in this video, I'm going to explore that further as is it worth paying a little extra to RV travel? So was it worth 22% more to travel in an RV the way we like to travel? The answer for me is absolutely yes. I tend to want to travel in an RV. This is the way I want to travel. This is the place I want to be. There's not a hotel right here. <laughs> I'm on the side of the Mississippi River. It's the winter. I'm in a campground. I could have a campfire tonight. I can't have a campfire in my hotel room, generally. And I can't be on the side of the Mississippi River out in the middle of the woods. And that's where I want to be when I'm traveling. I, I don't generally want to be in town. When you're answering that question, a couple of things matter. Your destination is going to matter. You know, our destinations are generally out in the sticks somewhere. They're not in a big city. And that tilts our travel to RV travel. I mean, we're outdoors people. We like to hike. We like to bike. We like to kayak. We like to explore nature and sights. We are not really drop off in a city and explore a city, you know, shopping and eating and all that. Like if we're out in a place like this, we'll go into town to eat and we explore the town that we're in but they're generally little small towns and we're just going there to eat. And then we come back and we're exploring out in nature all weekend and then we sleep in our RV. That's our, that's our typical travel. You know, our goal is state parks and national parks. That lends itself pretty heavily to RV and RV works really well for those. You know, if you're going to a city, an RV makes no sense, absolutely none. So if your destination is big cities, um, you're probably not going to want to have an RV because you got to deal with that. It's got to park somewhere while you're there. Uh, and those places are generally not going to be in the city where you want to be. So then you're going to be commuting in and out to the city, just a mess. So for us paying an extra $4,000 to be where we want to be is probably the only option we had. And if we had to pay 4,000 to do it, then that was definitely what we needed to do. Because like I said, there's probably not a hotel where we want to stay anywhere near here. If that changes and we want to move into traveling towards cities or populated areas, then at that point, we're going to hop on an airplane and go to the city and probably stay in a hotel because it'll be a lot cheaper. The other thing it allows you is it's a lot more flexible. I prefer driving to air travel because I can decide when I'm going to get up and when I'm going to leave and all those kind of things versus having to be at the airport at a specific time that generally is not when you want to be there. It's either really early or way too late. So I can control my destiny a little more if I'm driving my own vehicle with my own equipment and my own stuff. If I want to change my plan, I'm more able to do that. It's a lot easier than having to rebook, you know, hotels, rebook flights you know, rental cars, all that kind of stuff. That can turn into a huge pain and it can have rippling cascading impacts and wind up costing you a lot of money. If we want to stay an extra night at a campground, we can just book the extra night and, you know, change our whole plan as long as we can get lodging where we need to be. And if we can't, we can just boondock somewhere. <music> and then along those lines of flexibility, just having my own stuff with me is huge. I mean, there's only so much you can pack in a bag to take to a hotel room on an airplane. And here I can pack an entire truck full of stuff, all the stuff that I need. I still work full time. I need to be able to work. I need to be able to have all the things that I need to be able to do my job while also travel, while also just having things I like. Like I like to take my bikes with us because we like to go on bike rides. I like to take my kayaks with me. I might like to take fireplace equipment so that I can set up a fire. I might need extra clothes. We might need a tent because people are joining us and we need a tent to set up in our campsite. So I've just got all that flexibility that I just wouldn't have uh, otherwise if I'm having to jump on a plane and I have one suitcase and one carry-on. You know, the bad thing about RVing is you have to deal with the RV. You have to get everything set up when you get to the campsite. You got to tear everything down when you're done. You got to deal with the stinky slinky. You got to do, do the sewer. You got to park it somewhere when you're not using it. You got to tow it you know, to and from that place. Uh, and then you got to drive towing a rig up and down the interstate, which can sometimes be annoying. None of that really bothers me because we have a really good system in place. We've, 
you know, we kind of perfected getting all that stuff organized where it doesn't create a lot of trauma for us. Uh, Emily, it creates more for her than it does me because she just worries about stuff like that. But for me, I've got a checklist. I've memorized it at this point. I don't even have to get it out anymore. And we've just done it so many times that we can be hooked up in the morning and out of the place really quick. And same thing to get hooked up to go. And then once we're here and set up, it just doesn't take that long to get set up. So ultimately it's just about how you like to travel. Is it gonna be worth it to pay a little more to RV travel uh, than it is to just rent, you know, drive your own car and stay in a hotel or get on an airplane or do whatever it is you need to travel. It all just depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. For me, it totally makes sense to travel this way during certain times and the way we travel. And then for other people, the way we're doing it, it would be absolutely miserable. And sometimes it gets a little miserable for us. I mean, it gets annoying sometimes because you just like, I, I don't really want to have to drive the three hours to get where I'm going for the weekend. But that's just travel in general. Travel fatigue is a real thing and you know, it's just part of traveling. For me, the RV minimizes the travel fatigue because it just, I don't have to deal with so much. I can move on my own schedule. I have all this flexibility when I get there. If we're having a good time, we can stay longer. If we're having a horrible time, we can just pack up and go home anytime and switch to a new plan. And that will become more and more important as we get on other trips that are way longer out in the future. Now there's some other considerations besides just cost that go into all this when you decide to do RV travel. And they're in big important considerations as well. You know, RVing takes some practice. You can't just, you know, unless you've RVed before, you can't just buy a trailer or buy a big motorhome. I mean, you've got to plan. Like I said, we invested a lot of time in just to our cycle and all the stuff we needed to make everything easy. Um, so you're going to spend some money to do all that. You're also going to spend some time to get your plan down where you're just not, it's not a, a big pain in the butt every time you hook the trailer up and it just flows everything nicely. So RVing takes some practice. You can't just get on the road and, you know, you got to learn how to drive it. You got to learn how to back it in. You got to learn all the little ins and outs of your particular rig. You know, we've spent the last four years traveling the state of Tennessee and we just kept going further and further and further away from home and you know, as we got better and better, it just became less of a chore. Those first couple of trips though were a nightmare. I mean, I was white knuckling every time we would get go anywhere um, just because I'd never done it before. So we're really good now. And I, I would have no qualms about getting on the road and driving across the United States. We've done that. Our plan is to do that, to drive big long trips, but you don't want to do that to start out because it's not gonna be fun. The other thing is the more you use your rig, the better. If you buy an RV to go on a couple of trips a year, you should not do that probably. You should probably just rent an RV, get the experience. If that's what the experience you wanna have, then do it, but don't, don't own an RV to do that. If you're gonna invest in an RV, you need to make a commitment to actually do it to get the money out of it. Like I said, we've done 28 trips over four years and it still wasn't cost effective for us in the grand scheme of things. And then RVing can make longer trips possible. Just if you live on the east, like we do in Tennessee, and you're planning to go out to the west, it's gonna take you a day to get there and a day to get back, even on an airplane. I mean, you can eat up a day, two days just traveling. And we do that all the time. We fly out west and, you know, we spend basically a day getting there and basically a day of getting back. If you're going for us, if you have a seven day vacation and two of your seven days are eating up just traveling back and forth, well, that sucks. And I've done that many times. And every time I think I would like to stay in this place for a lot longer and explore the area and, or maybe string it together with some other places that are in the area. And that's what the RV is gonna allow us to do. It's gonna allow us to go to an area of the country and then stay there and explore it fully and then mark that off our list and go to the next area. And we can string together some locations that we wanna to put together on longer trips I mean, I know some people go full-time RV. I, our, our goal is not to full-time RV, but our goal is to go on some, 
you know, long, nice trips that we, you know, we'll look back on and think, well, we're glad we did that. I think the big thing for me is I want to get the, if I'm going on a trip, I want the majority of the time to be on the trip. You know, even if it's driving out west, you can still stop at places along the way that are interesting if you plan it correctly. And I plan to plan it correctly, where it's not just three days of driving to get to a destination and then three days back or a full day of flying and a full day of flying back. You know, I want it to be, you know, a couple of week trip and on the way we see a lot of things on the way that we want to see. And then we see the things out there that we want to see. And then we come back another way and see some more things that we want to see. You know, and an RV works perfect for that. When I say it works for me and the way I like to travel, that's exactly why. It's so that I can get the majority of my trip being productive, fun things, and not just a huge chunk of it traveling with all the travel stuff that goes along with that. You know, with an RV, you get a lot more flexibility. Let's say we get to an area and we just hate what we're doing or it's not what we expected. That has happened all the time. I mean, we will, when we have traveled the state of Tennessee, we've hit in all the state parks. Some of the state parks we go to are awesome. You know, I'll think, well, we were only here two nights and I wish I could stay a week. And then other state parks we get to, we're booked for two nights and I'll think, I'm done. And I, I literally was here one night and I'm ready to move on. With an RV, I can make those plans and move on down the road quicker or slow down and smell the roses where I wind up being. And I also think with that flexibility, that's where the RV really gains on the cost front is because that flexibility, we will be able to tailor our travel. And I think that's also when it gets a lot cheaper to travel versus the alternatives of flying and renting cars and staying in hotels and having to deal with all the changes that go along with that. It's just a lot easier when you're in your own vehicle when you can boondock if you need to, when you can stay at a campground if you need to, there's multiple places you can stay. You just have a lot more options, and a lot of those options are incredibly cheap options and allow you to stay in an area as long as you feel like you need to in order to see it. And then the final consideration is just, what is your setup and does it match what you're trying to do? You know, like I talked about, our setup with a truck and a trailer is perfect because we can unhook. We use the truck to drive all over the area when we're in an area. The truck also has room for us to store our kayaks and our, our bikes and our fire stuff and everything that we need when we're at a campground. And it keeps it all out of the weather, which is perfect. But our truck is our truck and trailer is not set up for boondocking. We're not set up to be just parking in parking lots and staying the night all seasons. We're not really set up for all season camping. And if we're going to do that kind of setup and we're going to get out west and we're going to do some of these longer trips, then we're going to have to get set up to do those things. And that's going to add to the cost of the trailer because I don't know what those things are. We may need a generator. We may need some solar. We may need batteries. We may need different things that we don't have now uh, in order to facilitate the type of travel that we'd want to do in the future. You know, so going from being a weekend warrior to a more uh, longer trips, longer loops kind of thing, that may require some different equipment. And it may, the truck and trailer may not be even the best option in some of those cases. I don't think that's the case. I, I think it works perfect for us and I could see it working for everything we would ever want to do. So I'm going to do all this in three parts. One, I'm going to look at RV travel versus other forms of travel and see which one costs more. And then I'm going to do, has an RV been worth it for us? In our four years, 10,000 miles and 28 trips, is it? Is it been worth it to us to be an RV traveler versus a traditional traveler? And then finally, just because there's so many numbers involved, I'm just going to nerd out. I'm going to pull up the spreadsheet that I built and I'll share it with anybody who wants it.